What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and chances are you probably already know but WWDC 2022, all the announcements have just come out and there's a lot to unpack. So we've got a lot of cool things from a software perspective but we also got a little bit of hardware and we actually got a chance to check out the new MacBook Airs as well as the new 13 inch MacBook Pro. So let's talk about them. So we've got a completely new design for the new MacBook Airs in four awesome colors. I think Midnight kind of stole the show. That's my favorite one. It's got this black look to it, but it's got hints of blue. It looks awesome, but there's also starlight for that in-between of gold and silver. That looks awesome as well. And we, of course, have the standard silver as well as space gray. Now, Apple went ahead and got rid of the wedge design that we used to see with the MacBook Air, and that's got a more flat look. I honestly really like it. It's a tiny bit lighter and a little bit thinner. And probably one of the best things about the new MacBook Airs, besides that new midnight color, has to be the bigger display. So now we've got shrunken down bezels leading to a 13.6 inch display. And that means you, of course, got that notch that we saw with the new MacBook Pros, uh, the 14 and 16 inch versions. But honestly, that's not a big deal. The screen looks awesome. But within that notch, we have a higher resolution camera that also has better low light performance. So we got a chance to test this out. It was in crazy good sunlight, so it looked really crisp. But once we get it in house, we'll really put it through its paces. Now we did see a couple of other physical changes like a new touch ID power button, as well as full size function keys. So that is absolutely welcome. And one of the biggest hardware additions has to be that MagSafe charger. So that is now here. We saw that with the new MacBook Pros. That is a very welcome addition here. But not only do we have the new MagSafe charger, but we also have a new charging brick that is an optional accessory unless you go for the higher priced option of the MacBook Air. But this one has two charging ports. It's a 35 watt charger. And if you decide to charge another device, it'll split that between them evenly. So really nice addition here. And it makes sense considering most MacBook users have an iPhone to go with it. And now thanks to the addition of MagSafe, that opens up those two Thunderbolt 4 ports to do pretty much whatever you want. So we've got the two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the left side, as well as the MagSafe, and of course your headphone jack on the right. But now we gotta talk about the biggest hardware change, and I'm not just talking about the body, but that's the fact that these are equipped with Apple's new M2 processor. Now, when M1 came around, it made a giant splash because that thing outperformed anything we could have imagined. And we now have the next generation of it. So we're seeing M2, which is going to increase performance by quite a bit. Now, I'm not gonna throw all the numbers and percentages at you, but I'll throw some up on the screen so that you guys can see this thing really is a beast. Now, if you've been living under a rock and you haven't heard about M1 and you're not sure what M2 really brings to the table, these new chips, are super powerful while also being very power efficient. So what we're seeing with the M2 is even more power, and I think pretty much the same power efficiency, these will have the same battery life as the previous generation with the M1, but we're still getting more power out of it, which is just mind boggling. Now, I don't know if this is really putting it in perspective because not everyone's a video editor, but this thing is gonna be able to have 11 streams of 4K, that means 11 4K full resolution images in Final Cut Pro. Basically guys, that's a lot of power. You can even have two 8K streams playing at the same time. I don't know how well that translates to the average consumer, but I'm telling you guys, take my word for it. That's a lot of power. And it's just been kind of crazy to see this kind of power come over to something as thin and portable as the MacBook Air. Now the new MacBook Air is gonna be coming in at $1199. But not to worry, they're still gonna be selling the M1 version, which is a very capable laptop, and that is going to be still at that $999 price range. So if you're still looking for the cheapest MacBook, that one's still gonna be available, and it's M1. You're still gonna be really happy with the performance there. Now, M2 is also coming to the 13-inch MacBook, and that's the MacBook with touch bar. It's like the last, the last remaining touch bar device, sadly, uh, but it's still gonna be there. If you're wondering what's the difference between the MacBook Air and the 13-inch MacBook Pro if they both have the M2, there's a couple of different changes. The first being the active cooling system. So with the 13-inch MacBook, you've got dedicated fans to keep the system cool. So if you're editing or doing any heavy power intensive activities, you're gonna be able to sustain better performance over long periods of time, a little bit better with that machine. It's got longer battery life, and you also got the touch bar. And that's about it. I don't think there's that much, right? And honestly, that's pretty much it in terms of hardware. Listen, man, 
I'm not gonna lie, this is the first time I paid attention to leaks and rumors in a long time. And everybody was talking about the MacBooks having the new iMac colors with like the bright red, the teal, the blues, all that. We didn't see that happen, so you know, lesson learned, stop paying attention to rumors. But now guys, we gotta talk about software. There's a lot of cool features coming up in iOS 16, iPad OS, Mac OS. So let's talk about some of the real big highlights of the new upcoming operating systems. So the first thing we gotta talk about you guys is iOS 16. And I gotta say, I feel like Apple was in my brain and they just hit on exactly what I was looking for with these new lock screen updates. So the lock screen now is very customizable. Before it was just, you customize it with wallpaper, you're done. But now it looks like you're gonna be able to change the style of the clock. Uh, and it's also got some really cool features that work with like portrait mode shots where somebody's head or face can be in front of the actual time. The way it works with photos looks really interesting and I am like just really pumped for this to come out. They've also added the ability to add widgets to your lock screen so you can see special information depending on what you add to it like battery life or upcoming calendar events, that kind of thing. And it just looks really, really clean so far. It's the level of customization that I feel like was missing from the lock screen and it feels like we finally have everything that we need. They actually even changed the way that notifications come in. So instead of coming in from the very top, now they're gonna be coming in from the bottom, which makes it a lot more accessible when you're swiping with your hand. So there's gonna be lots of cool lock screen stuff to geek out about. I'm gonna make sure I download the developer version on my phone, get to it, show you guys in a full dedicated video. But there were some other changes that really blew my mind. Well, I feel like we're really necessary. So iMessage is actually getting a couple of cool updates. You are now going to be able to unsend messages, you guys. Listen, I've made so many typos in the past where I feel like I wish I could just unsend a message, but Apple actually went another step further besides just unsending messages. But you'll actually be able to go ahead and edit messages that you send. So if you made a typo, you can go ahead and fix that typo or unsend the message altogether. Choice is yours, but I never expected to see that kind of feature, at least the editing feature, come to iMessage. So that is huge and very welcome. Now, another cool feature that we're seeing, Dom, let me know if this was on your, if you caught this, but Apple Pay Later, you can basically make a payment for something and break it up into four easy payments. Now you're gonna be able to do that with Apple Pay. So if I wanna buy the new MacBook, you can pay for that MacBook in four easy installments with no interest, no extra fees. You just break up the payment, which I think is gonna be really useful for a lot of people uh, who maybe wanna get their hands on something but don't necessarily have it right now. You know, you gotta put a, we're not gonna call it a layaway, but it's layaway, you know, it's layaway. But no fees, I think that's pretty cool. Well, it's not really like layaway, right, since you you pretty much get the item and then you pay. Either way, it's a really dope feature to have. Give it to me now feature. It's a give it to me now feature, basically. Now I'm not gonna go too deep into this one, but we're also gonna be seeing some upgrades to the home app. Now it's gonna be a little bit easier to understand what's going on. It looks a lot cleaner. I'm definitely going to be taking a deep dive into this. Now we talked a lot about the new MacBooks, so let's talk about Mac OS. Now there's the some pretty cool features coming over to Mac OS that I'm personally really excited for. I think the biggest thing that really stood out to me was Stage Manager. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm one of those guys who has a million applications open at once. And when you do Mission Control, you see all of those applications and you're still pretty much hunting down the apps that you wanna use or get into. This should make it a little bit easier by stacking everything over on the left side of the screen. And now you have a cleaner layout for all of those applications. You can have them organized by different categories, I think it makes a lot of sense and it's just really easy to pop open certain applications. This is something I really wanna dive into and just see how useful it is. I'm feeling like it's gonna be the same level of usefulness that we saw with like Stacks. When Stacks came out, I was super pumped for that because it helped declutter my desktop. And I feel like this is gonna be one of those things that really changes the way we use our MacBooks. Now Apple went ahead and created something very new called Pass Keys, which is a digital key that basically can't be fished, can't be stolen. It's really secure. It uses a combination of like biometrics and like 
special encryption. So we're gonna be seeing this in the newest versions of Safari, and this is gonna be a welcome change. I feel like this could be the beginning of something really huge, and it makes it very easy to now wanna be a part of the Apple ecosystem when you know your privacy is protected, your personal information is protected, there's a new level of security that Apple's offering that we don't have with any other companies, so this could be a game changer. Mark my words. Well, don't mark my words. Shoot, maybe I should invest in Apple stocks right now. If, if I think it's that great. All right, Dom, invest in some Apple stocks. <laughs> well, all jokes aside, passkeys sounds amazing. I really hope it takes off uh, because a lot of people will become protected if this pans out the way Apple described it. Now, another cool feature coming is called FaceTime Handoff. So you'll basically be able to take a FaceTime call on a device and move it onto a different device. So let's say you're on your MacBook, you gotta leave, you can transfer it right over to your iPhone and go on the go and continue your FaceTime call without actually having to call the person back. And it works vice versa. I think that's really cool. We've seen continuity come into play in a lot of different places in the operating system. So this is going to be a very welcome change. Now, we also saw this cool thing called continuity camera, where you're gonna be able to use your iPhone's cameras as a FaceTime camera. Mind-blowing stuff, you guys. You kinda gotta mount it on top of your Apple device so you can use it, but you get those high-quality cameras. But you also know there are multiple camera lenses on an iPhone. And Apple's done this really amazing thing where it takes the wide-angle lens and allows that to show your desk. So it's like you've got two different point of views at once. I would have never even thought of that. I didn't think you could use the wide angle lens in that way in the first place, but apparently it's going to be a thing. So it kind of looks like you have a top down shot so you can see whatever is going on around you. Now, you might be wondering why is that useful? Well, if you're streaming, I imagine there are a lot of Twitch streamers out there who like to do DIY stuff where they're working on a piece of art and capturing that at the same time. It's going to be really interesting to see if we can use this with third party applications like Twitch. I know we'll be able to do it with FaceTime, but it would be really cool to see that integrated into just the entire operating system where you can stream two different feeds at once right from the iPhone. And you won't even have to connect this through a cable. It'll be all wirelessly. It's gonna be super seamless based on what Apple's saying. I can't wait to test that out. Now, Apple did announce a couple of other changes coming to iPad OS and Watch OS, but I think we're gonna save that for another video. I wanted to talk about the main things for Mac OS, obviously because of all the new MacBook stuff, and iOS because everyone needs to know about some of those features. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you guys like the features coming out of WWDC. Now, it's just a matter of uh, having those operating systems become available, which will probably be later in the year. But that about wraps it up for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be the cool guy or girl that gives this video a thumbs up. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace. Dom, favorite favorite feature out of all of them? The, uh, FaceTime. FaceTime handoff. Yeah, I'm gonna use that. Good choice. I'm a big fan of the lock screen. Later, guys.